Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, the world is six things. He said it's ma'kul, wa mashroob, wa malbus, wa markoob, wa mashmoom, wa mankuah. He said it's something you eat, it's something you drink, it's something you wear, it's something you ride, it's something you smell, or it's something you marry. That's it. And then he said, and look at each one of them. The highest, he said, A'la ma'kul al-asal. The highest thing that you'll eat in this world is the vomit of bees. And he said, the highest thing that you will wear, that you'll drink in this world, is water. And every animal drinks that. We're all the same with water. Everybody needs water. He said, the highest thing that you will wear in this world is silk. And it's the, the excretion of a worm. He said, the highest thing that you'll smell is musk. And it's the mucus of a gazelle. And the highest thing that you will ride is a horse. And upon it, men are killed. And he said, and the thing that you will derive pleasure from your marriage is the meeting place of where you urinate from. That's it. So he said, don't get depressed about that. It's just, (laughs) you know, when you put it in that perspective, it really doesn't warrant being too depressed about it. And now look what this, kamithiri ghaith. It's like a rain that was needed. Ghaith is, matar is rain that comes anyway. Ghaith is the, the rain that you need. You ghaith and nas. It gives them sustenance. Kaghaith and a'jab al kufara nabatuhu. It astonishes or causes to, it delights the farmers because. Kufar also means farmer in Arabic. Kafir is the one that covers the earth over the seed. And so the farmer is, is the one who covers the earth over the seed. The, 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 the kafir is the one who covers the truth with falsehood. That's why he's a kafir, because he's, he's covering over the truth with this falsehood. He'll make the truth look like it's evil. He'll make it look like it's bad. And that's, they're called, you know, the Greeks called them sophists. And they, they were, Socrates despised them because he said they make the worse appear to be the better cause. And, and they did it with language. So, So if you look, like, look, go out there and just look. You know, take a drive up, if you have an afternoon or something on a weekend, take your family out to... Muir Woods or something like that. And just look right now how extraordinary all this green is. It's so beautiful. And the Burda talks about when the Prophet raised his hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the rains came down and the hills were turbaned with green silk. And you look out at these hills now, the Oakland Hills as you pass by or if you drive down to down here. Look at the hills. Just look with your eyes. You, I mean, if you're driving, keep your eye on the road. But... <laughs> Look out and just think about that they were all dead and now they're brought back to life. And the eye is delighted by that vision. But that is the nature of the world because it's not going to last. In six weeks, it's, it's all going to be dead again. It'll be yellow. And that's why Allah says that that's the nature of the world. And then it uh, dries up. And you see it yellow. And this is a beautiful Quranic nuance here is that Allah says, Thumma yahiju fatarahu musfarra. You know, that, that after that, some time elapses. Thumma is after time elapses. Yahiju, it dries up, yajifu. Fatarahu fa, and then you see it. And this is the thing about it is the fa occurs after a little bit of time. It's ta'qib, it's just immediately after. But the thing is, is that. Sometimes you don't notice. And so you'll see that it becomes musfarra. It doesn't say thumma fatarahu 
yasfarru, uh, you see it becoming yellow. No. Yahiju fatarahu musfarra. It dries up and then you notice that it's yellow. It's no longer green. How did that happen? I mean, it's a very mysterious thing. How did it go from green to yellow? At which point did it become yellow? I mean, it's a very interesting phenomenon. This is a fuzzy logic question. At which point was it no longer green? Because it was green, and then it turned into yellow. And it's a very strange phenomenon, because at a certain point you suddenly notice it's all yellow. And, and a little bit before that it was green. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and then it just, it's blown away in the wind. He said, I mean, this is, these are signs. Think about this. I mean, are, are, you, are you that much more significant than a blade of grass? That's my creation too. And it worships me. It doesn't disobey me. And I dry it up and turn it into hutam, just blown away in the wind. Are you that much more significant, really? I mean, that's a question. min Allah, from Allah, this forgiveness that comes from Allah. I mean, that's your state. You're all going to dry up and be blown away, but you'll be raised up. And then there's two possibilities here, adab or maghfira. And to get maghfira, it doesn't take very much effort. That's the whole point. It's just an admittance. Just admit, I'm your Lord, I created you. Don't be so rebellious. And if you're rebellious, say astaghfirullah. Right? Just say astaghfirullah. I can't help myself. I, I want to change. And this life is nothing but a delusional delight. It's a delight that deludes you because you think it's going to last and it doesn't. And there's been millions of people before us and maybe there'll be millions after us and we're just here in this brief moment in time and we think it's going to last forever and it, it doesn't. Nothing lasts forever except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't get deluded by it. Now, once you've understood this, you, you got the picture? This is all it's saying. Do you have the picture now? Do you understand it? Adunya mata'al ghurur sabiqu ila maghfiratan min rabbikum. Vie with one another to this forgiveness. Right? Once you understand the whole point, do something about it now. Sabiqu ila maghfiratan min rabbika wa jannah. The first thing should be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His forgiveness for not being a worthy servant, and His paradise. Its horizons are like the heavens and the earth. It's very interesting that Allah doesn't mention its height in the Quran. Right? It's mentioned the, the ard, and it's, it's interesting also in light of this theory that the universe is flat. Right, that's the latest theory that the universe is this flat. So the idea that there are, that's all there is is ard. Arduha. It's, it's horizons, you know, it's breadth. It's width. It's like the width of the heavens and the earth. And this is at a time when we didn't know that we're talking about millions of light years. We're talking about, this is at a time when they didn't, they looked up and just saw a canopy. They didn't think it was that far away. Now we know the universe is billions of galaxies and all these. I mean, and this is what Allah is saying about paradise, that it's, it's like the heavens and the earth. That is the bounty of Allah. He gives it to whomever He pleases. Those who believe in Allah and His messengers. And Allah is the possessor of vast bounty. And then, Nothing will come to you. And musiba in Arabic means khair or shar. No good or evil will come to you. But generally, the Arabs use it to mean 
evil more because that's the one you think about. Right? Nobody ever thinks about the good stuff. It's just the bad stuff that happens. I mean, that's what they say. Good news is no news. Right? That's why you, know, you read the newspaper, you'll get depressed because all they're telling you is this horrible stuff that's happening. وَمَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ مَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْرِ أَنَّ نَبْرَأَهَا Except that it's in a book before we cre- bring it into existence. إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ And that is easy for Allah. And this has to do with Afor knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that is, was, and will be. And the reason for that is So you don't get depressed about what you didn't get. You don't get depressed about if, if you didn't have material success in this life, don't get depressed about it. It's not worth it. So it's a way of accepting. It doesn't mean that you accept your lot in life, but it has to do with what's past. Don't grieve over the past because there's nothing you can do about it. All you can do about it is the present and the future. That's it. You, you, can, you can change your present state, which will change your future state. But don't, don't worry about the past. And you will not be overly joy, joyful about what he gives you. There's two riwayah, atakum or atakum, what comes to you or what he gives you. What's dangerous for the heart in Chinese medicine is excessive joy or excessive grief. They're both states that you don't want. People can die of heart attacks because they get too happy, like they win the lottery and they drop dead. They're just, they, it's too much. So the point is don't, don't get into that state where you're overjoyed. This is manic depressive type. It's an imbalance. You get too high and then you get too low. And, and the point is to keep you in the middle. That, that's what Islam is about. It's about being balanced, right? Mirthfulness, feeling happy is a good thing. And also appropriately sad about things. I mean, you shouldn't be happy when, if a child of yours dies. It's inappropriate. And at a funeral, you shouldn't be laughing. Although I've been to Moroccan funerals and they have a great time because usually it's after a long life. So I was with somebody at a Moroccan funeral and they'd, they sang the whole night um, qasaid about the Prophet ﷺ. And they were all really happy and this person says to me, this is a funeral? And I said, well, they look at it differently because he had a really long life and, and you know, they were happy for him. He was the imam of the Qarawiyin. And, and it was like, you know, it was, a, it was a good thing. So, But the point is, is that you don't get too happy or too sad. It should be appropriate and within appropriate bounds. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ And Allah does not love. Mukhtal fakhur is somebody who's, you know, they're always boasting about what they've done, what they have, what they've been given. Arrogant. It's arrogant boasters. It's people that really... Because they see themselves as superior to other people. It's a sickness. It's a disease in the heart. 